Hey guys, Logan here from Llama Index. I'm going through today our new agent workflow system that we're just introducing. Over the past few months, you've probably seen that we've introduced something called workflows in Llama Index. What those are is a sort of lower level abstraction or frame system for uh, writing agentic applications. So you have steps, steps are triggered by events, events are emitted by other steps, and you can kind of orchestrate all these together into an agent, into something agent-like, into any sort of workflow that you can imagine. And while this provides a really low level place to get started writing agents and agentic applications, there was sort of a missing high level entry point into this space. And so that's kind of what agent workflow is accomplishing, giving users this high level entry point into creating single agent and multi-agent systems while giving you a lot of customization and debugability out of the box. And so in this video today, I'm gonna to go through the basic features of agent workflow, kind of using a single agent as an example. And then once we understand how the agent workflow works, going to move into how you would set up a multi-agent system. So here I am setting up an LLM, just open AI. And then here I'm gonna be creating a single agent with a single tool that can search the web. So here I'm using Tavili. They give a super generous uh, kind of free tier on their API. So you can go there, get an API key, use it for free for a bit. Um, really nice for, for getting started. And so here, setting up a tool to sort of search the web. And then from there, I can import agent workflow and create my agent. So here I'm giving it the kind of function, the single function or tool that this agent has access to. I'm passing in an LLM, which was OpenAI, and then giving it a system prompt. What's happening here when I pass in this tool is it's parsing kind of like the name of the function and the doc string to kind of define like what that tool is doing. And so I can take this from here and just run my agent. I can ask it, for example, what is the weather in San Francisco? It will take that message, execute, probably select to search the web for the weather, come back with what the weather was and kind of give that response back to the user. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's like a single shot, like running through the system, picking a tool, getting a response back. A lot of the cool things that Agent Workflow is handling for you kind of come down to stuff around maintaining state between calls, serialization, uh, handling streaming and debugging. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this. So the kind of the first thing I'm gonna cover is maintaining state. So like I mentioned before, this is built on top of workflows. If you've used workflows before, you've probably come across this context object, which basically means it maintains the state for the run of a workflow. So here, if you can see, I can create this context object ahead of time. I can pass it into my workflow. I can say, hey, my name is Logan, and you know, get a response back. And now if I keep passing in this context, it's going to remember the past interactions. So I ask it the second time by passing in the context again, asking what my name is, and it still remembers. Now this is super powerful because this context is completely serializable. Um, you could put it to a dict, you could put that dict in you know, MongoDB, Redis, Postgres, some kind of DB. You could pull it back out and restore it uh, using this from dict method. And then you could plug that right back into your workflow. So here you can see I've done the full round trip of putting it to a dict, restoring it, and then passing this back into my workflow. And here it still remembers my name. So we have this object, we can serialize it, and it's holding all our state. The other really cool feature here is streaming. And when you hear this, you're probably thinking like, you know, the streaming text from the LLM call, like, you know, streaming out this response here. And yes, that is what I'm talking about, but I'm actually talking about even more than that. So in workflows, there's this concept of streaming the events as they're kind of like happening. And using this sort of concept in this, in this existing system, we can stream the internals of the, of the agent system as it's running. Uh, this includes, like I said, streaming the response. This also includes the actual input to the LLM calls. So you can see the actual chat messages being passed in. This includes uh, how, when the tools are called and the results of those tool calls and kind of giving us this overall system to like really debug what is and observe what is happening inside the system as we run it. And so here I've given this very thorough example going through everything. Um, 
here you can see we run the workflow and this time instead of awaiting the workflow, uh, I'm just not gonna await it, I'm gonna get this handler object. And then using that handler, I can kind of iterate over a stream of events. And so here, if you just wanna print the text like response as it happens, uh, that's the part I left commented in. Uh, everything else is kind of like extra. You can you know, see that current active agent. You can see the input to the current agent. You can see the exact output, uh, the tool calls. A lot of this information to expose what's happening, help you debug, and provide different types of experiences to users. Now, <clears throat> this context is useful for more than just uh, streaming and, and maintaining state we can actually give our tools access to the context as well. So here, if we give the context as the first parameter in any tool, it will get that context from the workflow. And so what this means is that we actually have access to, you know, sharing information between tools, sharing information about like the global state of your like agent workflow, uh, all kinds of really cool things. So here I set up a tool to set a name so you can see I'm asking for the context and then asking for a name. And so I get the state, I set the name to the state and kind of just return something here. So we set up our single agent here, we give it that tool, we run this, and then we can actually, you know, look at the, inspect the state in the context and see if it actually, you know, called this tool and, and set things properly. And we can see that uh, when we print here, yeah, like it stored my name into the context which is like super powerful. You could share information across like many things. You could share uh, state, you can maintain like, you know, some kind of global context about the user, uh, really cool stuff. The last thing that <clears throat> is possible with agent workflow is human in the loop. Now, again, this relies on being able to have access to the context in your tool calls. So this is kind of digging deeper into like how workflows work. If you're familiar with workflows already, some of this will look familiar. Uh, if not, that's totally fine. Um, here we're setting up a new tool. We're calling this a dangerous task. Uh, it's dangerous. It needs like some human to approve this function before it can run. So here we write a kind of built-in event here, uh, input required. We're writing this to the event stream so that it will show up when we stream events. And then here we're waiting for a specific event to come back through the system. So here we're waiting for this event of type human response event, and we want this event to have a attribute called username that's set to Logan. And once we receive that, this await will finish, and then we could check the response. And if it's yes, then we can execute our task. If not, we can abort. So same thing again, we can set up our single agent. We can run the workflow and get our handler. We can start streaming events. And then if we run into that input require event, you'll remember that we've wrote that to the event stream here. If we run into it, we can basically prompt the user in this case uh, to give a response. And then we can use the context to send back that human response event that we know that it's waiting for. And then finally, you know, to get the final response of the workflow, we could just await the handler and get the response. And so you can see here, this kind of does that whole loop of, okay, I've got this human input event that kind of like interrupts the workflow because it's stuck waiting in that tool until we send this event. Now that pattern might seem very specific to like a notebook or a script, or you know, it might only work with like a web socket and a production environment. There's a lot of cases where getting that human response might take minutes, hours, days, weeks. Um, and in that case, the workflow kind of context serialization comes into big hand, uh, comes into like very handy. So in this case, we could do a similar thing where we're gonna run the workflow, we're going to stream the events, we're gonna see that we got this input required event, and we're gonna break execution here. So we're kind of like pausing the workflow. The workflow is stuck kind of waiting for that human response event. And then we could just serialize the context, you know, store it somewhere, come back later when we have our human response. We can restore the context back and we can run the workflow and send that event that we know it's waiting for and get our final response. And the outcome is the same. We've approved that tool, that tool is executed, and we get back our result that, you know, that tool was executed. And that's a quick rundown of, of agent workflow and kind of the basic features that it's offering. And I think from here, it's a good kind of pivoting point to like, okay, these are all the features. This is how it can all kind of work with a single agent. 
Um, but for a lot of more use cases, especially these days, people are thinking about multi-agent systems, agents coordinating and handing off to each other and uh, kind of working together to complete a task. And so that's where we have this kind of example where we set up a multi-agent workflow that can research a topic. So here, going through this, we have a similar setup. We're using a single LLM, OpenAI again. Again, you could use multiple LLMs in this case for each each agent in our overall system. Here, we're just using one. And then here's like a few a bit of information about like what we're actually designing. So like I mentioned before, we're designing a system that can like do research on a topic and like write, write some kind of report or content. So we're gonna need, you know, a tool to do some research, a, sorry, not tool, agent to do some research, an agent to write the report, and then an agent to review the report. And you can kind of imagine as this system runs, these agents will <clears throat> hand off between each other to perform, you know, the tasks that they're specialized in doing. And so in order to support this system, we're gonna implement a few tools uh, some stuff to do web search, record notes, write report, and review report. And so kind of going into the code here, we, you know, we have our web search tool again back with uh, Tavili. And then we have a bunch of tools here for kind of recording notes, writing report, and reviewing report. And what's happening here is basically I'm prompting the LLM to give me, for example, the notes on a specific like topic, and I'm going to store that in the global context. And so what's going to happen on each agent chat message, that global context is kind of like injected into the LLM input. So it's going to see the research notes. It's going to see the report content. It's going to see the current review of the report. And so you'll see, we'll see later on how we can give a sort of initial state. And then as the system runs, this all gets filled in and we eventually get our final uh, report written. Now, when we're defining our agents or yeah, our agents in our, in our overall agent workflow, um, we're using these new uh, workflow agents. So basically we have these imports here. We have two types of agents you can use, a function calling agent. So you know if you're using an API like Gemini, or OpenAI, Anthropic with built-in tool calling, or Llama, um, you could take advantage of that built-in tool calling. Or for LLMs that don't have that, we have a React agent. And then this is also extendable to other uh, agent types as well. That's a topic for another video, how to subclass that, but totally fine. And so here we're setting up each agent. And basically this is kind of, you could think of this as like the config setup kind of step. So we're giving the agents like a name and description. So when we run this system, each agent is going to be aware that these other agents exist. And so we need to kind of give them a name and a description to kind of like describe to each other what they're for. Then we give a system prompt, kind of describing how this agents act. We pass in our LLM, we give it some tools, and then we specify optionally, uh, kind of restricting who this agent can hand off to. We can leave this blank and it, you know comment this out. And basically that just means it can hand off to any agent. But here I'm saying that the research agent can only hand off to the right agent. So we have similar setup for, like I said, our right agent or review agent and yeah, from here we've assembled our, our agents in our multi-agent system. And so from there, it's just basically just a means of running the workflow. And so you can see here, we can set up our workflow. We can pass in our three different agents. We can specify the root agent. So this is going to be the agent that runs first. As the workflow runs, there's a sort of concept of like an active agent who's like currently has control. And so we're saying that the research agent has control first. And at any point in time that agent can choose to hand off to another agent. Now we've specified up here that it can only hand off to right agent. So, you know, it might hand off to the right agent at some point. And then we're also specifying this sort of initial state. So you'll remember that our tools were writing to the context state. Here's like what we're starting with. So we have no research notes, there's no report written, and we, we need a review. From there, uh, it's just a matter of running this workflow. So you remember that as this workflow runs, we can stream events and kind of tap into what's happening under the hood. Uh, wrote some code here to kind of try to print that in a nice way. So you can see here I'm prompting the system to run, to write me a report on the history of the internet. And then I'm gonna go through here and kind of like print a bunch of stuff as, as this workflow is running. So I'm trying to print the active agent that's running. I'm trying to print the agent output and the tools that it plans to use and kind of like the results of tool calls. And so if I scroll through here, 
you can see that we started with our root agent, which is the research agent. It calls the search web tool, looking for the history of the internet. We get a bunch of stuff here, calls the search tool some more, decides it needs more information. We can keep going here. Eventually, it calls the handoff tool, so it's going to hand off to the right agent. So now the right agent has control of the system. It sees the history. All the agents share the context. It sees the history. It sees those notes, um, and it takes that a stab at writing a report. So you can see here it's writing a markdown report, and from there it hands off to the review agent. The review agent sees that, gives some review. It seems to think that the report is good enough. You could tune that prompt a bit more to be more critical. Um, <clears throat> maybe you had specific length requirements or topic requirements. Um, but here, thinks it's good enough, the report is reviewed, uh, and the system is done. Now you notice the final output is not the report, right? The report is saved in the context. The final output is just happens to be the output of the review agent here. So obviously we want to get that final report so we can access our context, uh, get that report content printed out, and we can see that final report here, uh, kind of giving some brief history of the internet. And yeah, that's how multi-agent systems work. That's how agent workflow works. Uh, we're super excited to see what people build with this. Um, so yeah, get out there, use it, have some fun. Thanks.